You are now tuned in to the Fuller Fanatic channel, and today I want to share a flipper design that's currently my favorite budget buy. This is the Natrix by Kershaw, believed by many to be modeled after the discontinued ZT-0777, but I believe this to be a jab at Tony by Kai and modeled after the Microtech Matrix for showing up ZT in regards to their infamous prototype challenge that Tony blew out of the water back some 15 years ago. The Natrix is offered in three sizes, which I have two the Mini or Natrix XS, and the featured variant, which is the midsize. This Natrix sports a three and a quarter inch drop point blade, which may appear to be worn cliffy, but definitely has a continuous drop from the spines jumping up until its very steep plunge that ends in a nice piercing tip. Being a more recent release, the blade is comprised from D2 steel, and for Kershaw, that's like the first lunar landing. The factory finish is completely stonewashed, which is a nice change to just about every release having a PVD coating or a dark tumbled finish. Honestly, I was about to remove the PVD coating from my mini Natrix blade, subframe, and all hardware until I came across this midsize, the size I originally wanted, plus a steel upgrade from Kershaw's lifetime supply of 8CR13 MOV steel. The blade thickness is just shy of an eighth of an inch, coming in at 11 hundredths of an inch and is a flat grind, where I made my first change by polishing the whole grind directly beneath the fuller to the blade's edge, and even continued around onto the spine. I left the fuller groove and blade flats in the factory finish, producing a contrasting look between the flats and the blade's grind that plays off any light source that the steel is under. The handle comes in at four and a quarter inches in length, 3D milled and completely chamfered, even in that one area I say Kershaw always seems to forget well, not this time. The subframe lock is entirely comprised of steel and fits the design lines like a puzzle piece. And the same goes for the pocket clip that has been shaped in the same fashion as the milled area it rests in. As for the handles, both lock and show side have internal milling for additional weight relief. One of the two issues I would change up is the backspacer. The same glass filled nylon as any other Natrix and many other Kershaw models. The hardware comes from the factory with a bead blast finish which of course, I polished all of it. In addition, I added kind of a sculpted look in the recessed areas of the copper handles, producing contrast between the two raised and recessed sections, and playing off the satin polish I've added to this blade. Coming in with an overall length of seven and a half inches, the copper handles push the weight of the Natrix to 4.9 ounces, which isn't a big deal for me, but I know some EDC lovers will say it's a deal breaker with the blade to weight ratio on the build. Being copper, presents the second and last issue I have with the Natrix, which is it being very butt heavy. The balance is set pretty far back despite all the weight relief attempts. This affects cutting and that feel of being weightless when correctly balanced. This brings me to the means of deployment. Primarily, for most users, this is the flipper tab, which on the gym side and the other side of the guard, I've polished both surfaces. The detent is tuned very nice. The blade rides along the bearings with a super smooth travel and has a solid lockup at about 40%. I've polished the pivot, steel washers between the copper and bearings, and the bearing area on the blade stock, along with the detent track. Now the retraction differs from the factory setting, being a lot more glassy and hydraulic in feeling. And with the blade's weight, there only needs to be the slightest bit of tilt and encouragement, and she falls home. Now for some odd reason, Kershaw never makes mention of any of their fullers as a means of deployment, yet in my opinion, this is the best feature on the Natrix, the full length fuller. The fidget factor on the fuller is through the roof. Its deployment is so snappy, ending with a loud and solid lockup. And its length allows for any and every finger to engage deployment via this fuller. While most fullers have a sweet spot, so to speak, usually further away from the pivot, gaining more leverage. The Natrix Fuller, on the other hand, breaks the detent when flicked from almost anywhere within the fuller zone. And unlike recent releases by Kershaw, this fuller is very, very smooth, but not to be confused as slippery. The edges are inviting, and all of my favorite flicks can be easily performed from the reverse ring finger flick to the slinky pinky, and the trigger finger to the windex, the flick of the index. This fuller is at the top of the list in my opinion, and for the price, really can't be beat. I picked up the mini for about 25 bucks, and the midsize in this variant can be had for about 35 to 40 bucks, a definite steal. And the ergos are perfect for my hand. The handle's dual top lines may look awkward, but fall perfectly into the swell of the palm and provide a natural area for the thumb to fall, 
While the bottom line does have a partial choil like swoop that provides placement options without forcing the finger into a certain area as some frames do. And the fact that the subframe remains the height of the rest of the frame in this choiled area reduces the feeling of the fingers being spread by body lines. The lock release is also smooth with the mill section making lock disengagement even easier. Although I haven't ever had this problem, I've heard of many people complaining about the mini versions lock bar giving them trouble from being too slippery or riding the subframe preventing deployment in some cases, mostly left-handed users. Now this midsize doesn't have this issue and I'm assuming from finger real estate and there being more surface area to grip. And another upgrade I can point out is the stop pin or the fact the stop pin isn't reinforced. The G10 variant of the Natrix, in my opinion, is really not a hard use knife. I wouldn't put any amount of great downward pressure on the blade and pin and expect the G10 to hold up. Initially, yes, but over a long period of time, I wouldn't bet on it. And yes, copper is a softer metal, but this isn't a concern on this model. And another reason I picked this version up. Overall, when it comes to budget buys, the Natrix design is the winner in my book. Between features I like, such as bearing systems, functional jimping, great ergos and all holds, and functional blade profile. While I definitely did do away with the backspacer and would love a pivot update, for the price point, I can't be upset about either one of these. And with all the positives about the build, this is the main reason for it ranking as the king of Kershaw's. Of course, my personal opinion and experience. So comment down below with your personal thoughts and experience about the Natrix. Would you buy one? And if you already own one, where does yours rank in your collection? Please share, hit the like button, and definitely hit the subscribe and notification bell to stay up to date with new channel content. Signing off from the Fuller Fanatic.